Welcome to the online risk management training course for the Atlanta Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. This training was made by the Atlanta Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated for the sole use of the chapter for training. This online training presentation is designed to inform the members of the Atlanta Alumni Chapter who will be participating in programs involving youth on how to manage risk associated with these programs. During this training, we will focus on learning about risk management by understanding the policies, procedures, and guidelines of risk management, identify risk management activities, and applying best practices in implementing risk management practices. The purpose of this training is to ensure that all participating chapters administer all youth initiatives consistently and in a manner that is in the interest of participating youth and Delta to minimize any harm or injury to the youth as well as the probability of Delta incurring liability. Risk management is a component of compliance. Chapters can be asked to stop all operations if not in compliance. One-time guest speakers do not have to comply with the risk management procedures, and volunteers must be of 19 years of age or older. It is a violation for any member to engage in activity that simulates membership intake or initiation rights. No member shall require or allow any youth to engage in any of the following. Stepping, dressing uniformly, wearing Delta paraphernalia, referring to volunteers as big sister, adopting or using a special call or sound, assigning a special name or number, running errands or performing tasks for volunteers or meeting in secret locations. T-shirts are permitted. They must be worn only at Delta sponsored events and Delta symbols cannot be used on participants t-shirts. All volunteers must be screened and trained. Screening is every three years. At screening, volunteers must acknowledge Delta's policy against youth abuse and sign a code of ethics policy and agree to promptly report any suspected abuse to authorities. Screening includes the completion of a written application, a face-to-face -face interview, a check of two out of four references, and a criminal background check as mandated by Grand Chapter. The regional director must approve all youth initiative volunteers. An approval list will be sent to the chapter president. The president will forward the list to the risk management coordinator. Training records must be securely maintained as part of the chapter's official files. Evidence of training must be maintained by the chapter. Training is annual. The volunteer application and information must be treated strictly confidential. A volunteer will be disqualified if the volunteer fails to complete the screening process, has a past history of substance abuse or abuse of youth, has been convicted of any crime involving youth, has a history of violence or sexually exploitive behavior, or was terminated from any position caused by misconduct with youth. Maltreatment is less likely to occur when interactions between adults and youth are visible to others. Therefore, there shall be no one-to-one -one isolated contacts involving adult volunteers in any tutoring, training classes, or group activities. Volunteers must adhere to the 15-minute rule. Volunteers must check on youth participants if they are gone away from the program activities more than 15 minutes. All abuse must be reported immediately. A termination of the relationship between the youth and alleged volunteer perpetrator must occur immediately. 
Child abuse consists of any act of commission or omission that endangers or impairs a child's physical or emotional health and development. The major forms of child abuse are physical abuse, emotional abuse, and sexual abuse. Watch for physical abuse signs, bruises or welts, burns, unexplained fractures, and other types of unexplained abrasions or lacerations. Physical neglect signs, child is always hungry, consistent lack of cleanliness, clothing not suitable, and behavior that does not appear normal. Emotional abuse and deprivation signs, behavior which indicates depression, antisocial behavior, loss of appetite, and refusal to eat. Sexual abuse signs, child expresses or implies sexual activity involvement, reports pain, itching, bruises, or bleeding of genitalia, signs of pregnancy, demonstration of withdrawn behavior, exaggerated knowledge, or interest in adult sexual behavior. Keep parents and guardians informed of all youth initiatives. Send schedules of events to inform parents of all planned activities. Include a parent's guide as part of the chapter's published materials about the youth initiative. Ask parents and guardians to talk with their youth about youth abuse. Encourage parental participation, visitation, and observation during program activities. More importantly, obtain a signed general release releasing Delta from unintentional injury to the child. Please obey strict guidelines on photographing youth. Never photograph youth in any stage of undressing, such as nude, partially nude, in underwear, or wearing pajamas. Chapters must obtain authorization from parents to photograph youth and to use the photograph for chapter-related activities. Parental authorization must acknowledge that Delta will own all rights to photographs and release Delta from all liability. Names of youth participants can be submitted to the news media if a release is signed. Before imposing discipline, chapters must implement the following procedures. Communicate to parents that certain actions will result in disciplinary actions. That the discipline under no circumstances will involve physical punishment. That participation in any Delta Youth Initiative requires the youth and parent guardian to agree to follow established policy, which includes consent to be disciplined. When imposing discipline, allow the youth the opportunity to tell their side of the story. Stay solution focused and involve youth participants in the solution process. Volunteers should never use offensive language when addressing youth. When a volunteer feels themselves getting upset, they should step back from the situation. Avoid embarrassing the youth in front of their peers and other volunteers. Rewards and punishments must be appropriate and designed to encourage positive behavior. Always discipline in a manner to rehabilitate and guide youth towards positive growth. Structure discussions and activities so that youth feel empowered to freely express themselves without fear of being judged harshly or unfairly. Always use good judgment and common sense. Prohibited activities include sleepovers, pajama parties, overnight retreats, overnight book talks or workshops, or any overnight cultural experience. There shall be no out-of-program contact between volunteers and youth without the express written permission or participation, i.e. presence, of the parent or guardian. Approval of the Regional Director and National Program Planning and Development Committee is required for college tours. An action plan must be submitted. Criminal background clearance for chaperones and commercial transportation with liability coverage is mandatory. A 90-day advanced approval is required for any overnight activity. Youth have a right to privacy. Youth should not be observed changing clothes, showering, or using toilet facilities 
unless security dictates that an adult be present. Adults should also protect their own privacy and should never undress, shower, or use the toilet when they may be seen by youth. Refraining from inappropriate touching is an important component of respecting a youth's right to privacy. If a youth seems uncomfortable with hugging or other touching, there should be no touching. Touching, including hugging, shall not be prolonged. Touching shall occur only in public in the presence of others, never in secret or isolation. If touching is required, touch only with the youth's permission. Always use sign-in, sign-out sheets for youth initiatives. Sign-in procedures must require a parent or guardian of youth participants to identify individuals authorized to pick up their youth from the program. Volunteers can transport youth participants provided. They submit a copy of their driver's license and valid proof of insurance to the chapter president and the guardian has signed a waiver and consent form. When chapters use required commercial transportation to transport youth participants, chapters must obtain written permission of each participant to be transported to and from the event. Chapters must contract with reputable companies with comprehensive general liability insurance. Chapters must require that the company add Delta as an additional insurer on the company's liability policy. Chapters are responsible for protecting youth from the danger of allowing access to inappropriate internet exposure, including harassment, stalking, and physical injury. Chapters must develop and distribute to youth an acceptable internet use policy. Consider installing blocking filtering software on computers used by youth. Provide an internet orientation training session. Monitor and routinely observe youth online activity and check visited sites. Inform youth they have no privacy rights while using Delta's equipment to access the internet. Chapters must establish procedures to follow regarding when to send an ill youth home, what to do if the parent guardian is not available, and what medications a volunteer can dispense and accommodations for allergic or asthmatic youth. Chapters must also obtain parental permission to seek necessary medical care in an emergency. The chapter must require parents to complete and sign forms granting permission to administer medications if a youth participant is expected to need medication during participation in Delta activities. First aid kits are required for all youth initiative activities. When sponsoring outdoor activities, keep an eye on weather conditions and respond accordingly and limit activities when the weather is extreme, hot or cold. In conclusion, Delta's primary concern is for the safety and well-being of all youth participants. This objective is best achieved when members adhere strictly to the policies, procedures, and guidelines explained in the Risk Management Manual. This completes our training for the Delta Risk Management Training. You may now proceed to the written test. For more information, contact the AAC Risk Management Team. You can email them at riskmanagement at atlantaalumnidst.org.